Important PPEs used on ships. PPE, a critical factor to seafarer safety on board. Unsafe, no safety helmet, no eye protection, no air plug, loose damaged shirts. Short pants, filled sneakers or sandals. Safe, wear safety helmet, wear eye protection, wear eye plug, uh, air plugs, wear dust mask when necessary, fasten chin strap, wear fitted working clothes, wear harness, button sleeves, wear safety gloves when necessary, keep trousers edge in place, wear safety shoes. PPS represent the final link in a pre-planned chain of shipboard safe work practices that should provide multiple barriers to seafarer injury and that as such PPS provide the ultimate barrier that should only engage if all other safety work practice barriers have failed. What are the personal protective equipment on board ships? Number one. Protective clothing. Protective clothing is a coverall which protects the body on the crew member from hazardous substances like hot oil, water, welding, spark, etc. It is properly known as a boiler suit. Helmet. The most important part of the human body in the head, it needs utmost protection which is provided by a hard plastic helmet on this ship. A chin strap is also provided with a helmet which keeps the helmet on place when there is a trip or fall. Safety shoes. Maximum of the internal space of the ship is utilized by cargo and machinery which is made of hard metal and which make it clumsy for a crew to walk around. Safety shoes ensure that nothing happens to crew members feet while wor working or walking on onward. Number four, safety hand gloves. Different types of hand gloves are provided on board ship. All these are used in operation wherein it becomes imperative to protect one hands. Some of the gloves provided are heat resistant gloves to work on a hot surface, cotton gloves for normal operation, welding gloves, chemical gloves, etc. G goggles. Eyes are the most sensitive part of the human body and in the daily operation on ships, ch chances are very high for having an eye injury protective glass or goggles are used for eye protection, whereas welding goggles are used for welding operation which protects the eye from high intensity spark. Air muff plug. Engine room of the ship produces 110 that's 120 dB of sound which is very high for human ears. Even few minutes of exposure can lead to head irritation and sometimes partial or full hearing loss. An air muff or air plug is used on board ship which dampens the noise on a durable decibel value. Safety harness routine ship operation includes maintenance and painting or high and elevated surface which require crew members to Rich areas that are not easily accessible to avoid a fall from such heightened area. Safety harness is used safety harness down by operator on one end and tied as a strong point of the other end. Face mask. Working on isolation surface, painting or carbon cleating involves minor hazardous particles which are harmful for human body. If inhaled directly to avoid these face masks are provided which as a shield from hazardous practice. Chemical suit. Use of chemicals on board ship is very frequent and some chemicals are very dangerous when they come in direct contact with human skin. A chemical suit is worn to avoid such situation. Welding shield. Welding is very common operation on board. For a structural repairs, welder is provided when welding shields are most which protects the eyes from coming in direct contact with ultraviolet rays of the spark of the weld. Permit to work refers to management system used to ensure that work is done safely and efficiently. These are used in hazardous industries and involve procedures to request, review authorized document, and most importantly, the conflict tasks to be carried out by frontline workers. Permit to work is an essential part of control of work. 
the integrated management of business critical maintenance process. Control of work is made of permit to work hazard identific identification and risk assessment and isolation management. Permit to work are formal management system used to control high risk activities as part of our control measures. This enable an assessment of risk to be made and specifically control measure which will be put in place in order to minimize the risk. The permit should mention the measure undertaken to make the job safe and the safeguards that need to be taken during the operation. The permit should have period of validity should not exceed 24 hours. Only the work for which the permit is prepared we undertaken and no other jobs should be done. What is risk management on board ship? A risk assessment as simply as assessment of risk. It is an examination of a task or job that may be carried out of the board to identify the presence of hazard that may cause harm to people properly or environment. What is risk management in shipping? ISO 8402-1995 BS4 770 define risk management which includes maritime risk assessment as the process whereby decisions are made to accept unknown as assessed risk and or the implementation of action to reduce frequency or probability occurrence. The HSE suggests that risk assessment should follow five simple steps. Step 1. Identify the hazards. Step 2. Decide who might be harmed and how. Step 3. Evaluate the rest and decide on precautions. Number 4. Record your findings and implement them. Step 5. Review your assessment and update if necessary. Procedure for entering an enclosed space on a ship. An enclosed space is defined as a space that has the following characteristics. Where is an unsafe oxygen level and or toxic gas or an vapor? Limited opening for entry and exit. Unforable natural ventilation and not designated for continuous worker or company. And includes but is not limited to cargo space, double bottom, fuel tanks, ball tanks, cargo pump rooms, cargo compressor rooms, cover dams, chain lockers, void space, the kills, enter barrier space, boiler, engine crack cases, engine scavenges, air receivers sewage tanks and adjustment connective space this list is not exhaustive unless should be produced on a ship by ship basis to identify enclosed space source imo resolution a.1050 27 revised recommendation for entering enclosed spaces aboard ships 21 december 2011 international maritime organization regulatory guidance what precaution must be taken for entering an enclosed surface? The confined space has to be well ventilated before entering enough time. Should be allowed to establish a ventilation system to ensure that air containing enough oxygen to sustain life. In introduced ventilation can either be natural or mechanical using blowers. No entry. To be permitted in an enclosed space unless the prescribed enclosed space entry procedures are followed and permit to work issued. This must include a formal risk assessment to identify potential hazards and risk mitigation methods to control them. Accordingly, enclosed space entry permit. This permit relates to entry into an enclosed space and should be completed by the master or responsible person and by other person entering the space, e.g. competent person attendant. The entry permit should contain a clear indication as to its maximum period of validity which should not exceed 8 hours. It should also describe the maximum permitted time between testing of the atmosphere and entry of personnel into the space. The hazards associated confined spaces include Toxic atmosphere. A toxic atmosphere may cause various acute effects including impairment of judgments, unconsciousness, and death. Oxygen deficiency. Oxygen enrichment. Flammable or explosive atmospheres. Flowing liquid or free-flowing solids. Excessive heat. How do you rescue someone from enclosed space? 
The rescuer entering the enclosed space must wear an ex SCBA and carry an EABD and rescue harness for a casualty use. This should be on continuous communication with the rescue supervisor, supervisor who should appraise the master of events personnel should be uh, allocated to relieve a backup to rescue team. What precautions must be taken before entering an enclosed space? The confined space has to be well ventilated late before entering enough time should be allowed to establish a ventilation system to ensure that air continuing containing enough oxygen to sustain life and introduce ventilation can either be natural or mechanical using blowers the lack of oxygen the ox acceptable range of oxygen in enclosed space in between 19.5 percent to 23.5 percent oxygen in any compartment can reduce due to many factors rusting to steel parts of the most common one the rescue and resuscitation equipment are to be present outside the confined space rescue equipment includes breathing air apparatus spare charged bottles stretchers means of hoisting an incapacitated person from the space like a tripod rescue harness portable lighting and etc a pre-entry checklist may include the following. Discuss prior to entry scope of work to be done inside confined space. Permit confined space. Entry permit has been issued. Verification of condition. Testing results. Monitoring ventilation. Isolation. Equipment. Clothing. Tools. And personal protective equipment. Training. Standby rescue team.